Sprinting can help every mountain biker. In this video, we're gonna take a look at scenarios where sprinting is essential on the trail and in races. And then we're gonna take a look at how to improve your sprinting ability on and off the bike. Encourages that speed. If you take a look at this section of trail, it's littered with features. We've got a big berm and then two step downs. And it's only until here that you can actually see that there's quite a large tabletop to clear. So this is the only part where Pat could get more speed with some pedals. Now let's take a look at how Pat put some pedals in this crucial section. Bam! It was only three or four pedals, but it was enough <laughs> to get pretty high. If you take a look at this piece of trail, there's lots of technical sections, but before it, a little opportunity for Pat to put some hard pedals down. Each one, the more powerful it is, the more inertia over those obstacles. You might come across a part of a trail here, like this big berm feature, and between features again, there's a flat bit where Pat has opportunity to pedal, put some power down, and then meet the next feature at speed. Standing starts isn't just for racing. Actually, if you're a trail rider and like here at the local woods, there's only a little amount of space to get up to speed before hitting the first feature. So it's best that you have all of that power and sprint ability to make the most out of this ride. She's tight. Go on, pedal, 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 pedal! So this is a little fire road section between two descents. You often see these now in the EWS, but you don't have to be an EWS racer to want to get up to speed on a little non-technical section like this. So we're now going to go to the gym and take a look at how we can train specifically for these super short to medium long sprints and get you up to speed with on bike and off bike training. Before we get into the gym and tell you exactly what to do, let's take a look at why we're gonna do it. So if you look at this study that's been done on track cyclists, I know that it's a little bit different from mountain biking, we'll get to that in a second, but these track cyclists were tested and it was shown that there's a considerable difference in the anaerobic capacity of a sprinter to an endurance rider. And that's really important because we want to to increase the sprinting ability, increase the anaerobic capacity of you, the rider. And how to do that, it's suggested or proven that high intensity interval training can do that very effectively. So we're gonna take a look at that in the gym on a turbo trainer and outside on the bike. So strength has been proven to improve cycling efficiency and even on the very top end of endurance, the ability of riders to go for longer. Aerobic capacity, VO2 max, maximal power, all of these things are gonna help improve your riding. But today specifically for sprinting, strength is an absolute no-brainer. But we're gonna add on top of that strength, some speed and power work. But I just wanna say at this stage that this is the foundation of what we're talking about today for sprinting. We use science all of the time in our programs to give you the best to increase your ability, not just in fitness, but in your actual dynamic ability, balance, and all of the things that make you a holistic rider. So on that end of the scale, we've got strength and high intensity interval training. We've got other elements that form our program particularly in the middle with the conditioning, which we find is the most effective at making you a better rider because we make you into a very functional, dynamic rider. So not just a road cyclist with good, good capacity that can't handle a bike going downhill at speed, but well, we're looking specifically at downhill enduro and trail riding where there's a big emphasis on the gravity side of it, going downhill fast. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and in future videos, we will show you how to structure that conditioning to make you a better rider. But for now, let's go into the gym and take a look at improving your speed, power and sprint ability. The best way to get strong is compound lifts, undoubtedly. Things like back squats and deadlifts. So doing heavy sets of three to five reps is gonna build absolute strength. 
That's what we need with these lifts, especially at the start of the off season. But as you go through a periodized program, we want to start looking at reducing weight and adding things like bands to these squats so that then we can increase the velocity and reduce the weight. Oh! <laughs> Have you got it, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> so by adding these bands, we're looking at less of a percentage of your three rep max but bands are great than just the intention to move fast because you've got something to push against, it's lighter at the bottom and it, encourage the, it encourages that speed and power upwards. And then as you start getting closer to races or when you want to peak, jumps are absolutely fantastic. And it can be kettlebell swings or something that's just lighter again and even faster. If we take a look at these two movements, the back squat, <laughs> you tired, but <laughs> you did a good job there. If we take a look at the back squat and the deadlift, lots of people prioritize the hinge, but what we're doing here is a high bar Olympic lifting back squat, which is quite quad dominant, and then the hinge in the deadlift, which is posterior chain, glutes and hamstrings. By doing both of these movements on different days, we get to hit the legs in different ways and building strength for a holistic hip power strength ability. Does that make sense? Hip power strength ability. So we're building the whole of the hip rather than just focusing on what might be anecdotally the muscles that you use whilst riding. Because undoubtedly, the quad strength is as important as the glutes and hamstrings. The suggestion then, if you're gonna build absolute strength and you're gonna follow this, is to split your days into two. You're gonna do squats on one day and deadlifts on the other. Stick to a range of three to five reps initially of good quality full depth squats. Now bear in mind that full depth is not below parallel. It is as low as you can go whilst maintaining your lower back curve. And that's all you need to know. Don't hunt for depth and make it dangerous. So do squats on one day, three to five reps for five to seven sets. And then on the other day, put your legs. <laughs> on the other day, do deadlifts. Now you can also add assistance movements to those. So on squat day, you'll do hinge assistance. On deadlift day, you'll do squat assistance. And that'll mean that we get the boast, the boast. We get the most out of each training day to maximize strength. Now this is all written down in our programs at fitforracing.com. So if you wanna take the guesswork out, you can sign up and actually now you can choose to do a strength bias part to the program or capacity, depending on what you've identified you need. On bike training is reasonably simple. We suggest that you find an even hill like this fire road and spend time sprinting up as fast as you can, anything between 10 seconds and a minute, and then coast back down with plenty of recovery in between. Do five to 10 sets, but you know, you've got all your gear on. You might not want to be outside doing this type of stuff when you can be riding decent trails. So instead, an even better way to record and repeat efforts is on an indoor trainer like this one. These are ideal, particularly the ones that change the wattage or the power for you. So you can pre-plan interval sessions from 10 seconds to five minutes to get that sprint capability that you might be lacking on the trail. You pre-plan it with an ideal number of work and rest intervals so that then you get the maximum out of your efforts. But the most important thing about this is you can just hop on and do it. So if you're out on a trail bike and you wanna do intervals up and down a hill, fair enough. But for me, maybe Pat as well, is if you get all your gear on and you travel to a trail center, or even if you're out on an actual bike, you wanna go for some fun. This is convenience. So you can have this left set up, you can hop on and do two high intensity interval sessions per week and that'll absolutely boost your sprint ability and probably the rest of your riding ability as well. And that's it for this video, but before you switch off, please 
consider taking a look at the Fit for Racing programs at fitforracing.com. There you can choose a program specifically for your discipline, but within it, there's lots of things that you can change depending on your needs. That way you can get the best from your time in every single session in the gym and you don't even have to think about it. Just get in, look at the website, complete the workouts, become a better rider. That simple. If you've got any questions whatsoever, send them over. We're more than happy to help. But hopefully I will see you on the program soon. Remember, it's your time. Make it count. Peace.